So BMI is racist. What do they think of next? How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about the American Medical Association saying that BMI, that means body mass index standards are racist because uh, it's not really accounting for certain body types, you know, black Americans, Hispanics, uh, maybe some of the Samoans, they're just naturally big. And it's, it's a racist thing to put down bodies of color and things of that nature. Now, this is a ridiculous thing. And I think it comes from people that are living in America. You see, America is a big nation. And I don't mean geographically. I don't mean necessarily population-wise. I'm talking about as far as the average weight of the men and the women, right, right at the very top. I think the average weight for a male in America is 199.1 or something like that, like a skosh below 200 pounds for the average weight of an adult male over the age of 20, from 20 up until the end, 200 pounds on average. And for women, it's 170 pounds on average, which is about 20 to 30 to 40 pounds higher than it had been in American history. But they say BMI is a racist thing. This is ridiculous, totally ridiculous. And before I go any further, there's a video that I've not watched yet, but I want to see it with you guys. If you want to see this video in full without my commentary, link as always will be in the description. This is from Now This. I may pause it at certain points because of copyright restrictions, but without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. EMI disproportionately impacts people of color because in the United States, people of color and especially black people tend to have higher weights than white populations. Okay, now that is true, I suppose, but the question is why? And is it racist? And there's any number of reasons for that. Okay. Black people were actually bred to be bigger and stronger during the era of slavery. As a result, what we find is that today, black people tend to be more muscular than white folks. And we might imagine that this means that black people also tend to be heavier. So there's a very clear way well, okay, see, now we, we're talking about different things. You're talking about the propensity to be able to gain muscle, which comes from exercise and diet, really. You, you're conflating that with obesity, with being overweight, with being fat. When you're talking about obesity, black folks are going to lead. Like in the South, black folks and white folks got a problem with obesity, but black folks have it more. It's like 45% of black women are obese compared to like 30 to 35% of uh, white women. So... Both race groups have an issue, but it's just a little bit higher among black women. That's like the same thing as talking about having more muscle tone. That's not how that works. In which BMI entraps black people by suggesting that your bodies in and of themselves are inherently unhealthy, according to a white standard. That's totally ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. A white standard. You got a lot of obese white people as well. When I see my 600 pound life, I'm seeing... You got these a thousand pound, what was it like a, a thousand pound sisters, two white women. So the, the race argument here is totally bogus, especially when you look at the whole world. You see, there's more countries beyond the US of A. Okay, you go to Africa, you're not going to see a lot of obesity. Why? Because there's not a lot of food that people are just chomping on all times of the day and night. That's just not the reality of the situation. Now, can we get into this article right here, this New York Post? And again, everything, it'll be linked. But you see what's going on. BMI standards are, quote, racist, unquote, American Medical Association. So it's not just now this. It's not just that lady right there. You have the American Medical Association saying that BMI standards are racist. <laughs> New York Post is funny with their, their puns and whatnot. Wait, what? Let's go down here. The AMA, the largest council of doctors in the U.S., is ready to say goodbye to determining if someone is a healthy weight solely by the body mass index owing the measurements, owing to the measurements racist roots. Now, if you don't know about BMI, you put your height, weight, and you put, you put your height in inches and your weight in there, and it would give you a range of where you are, whether you're underweight, a normal healthy weight, overweight, or obese. Now, People may say, oh, well, somebody's six foot tall, 220 pounds. They look good to me. They're not overweight. Well, 
they might look good to you because number one, you're an American. You used to see people that are pretty big like that. And number two, just because somebody is overweight does not mean they're going to be 600 pound life. There's levels to uh, your weight, whether you're underweight, normal weight, slightly overweight and obese. There's levels. You may look different. You may look pleasing to some people and you could still fall into a certain category that may not necessarily be too flattering. Okay. Some of the people, some people I see that are completely 100% obese that are obviously obese. A Lizzo people will sit there and say, Oh, she's beautiful. She has a perfect body. They'll say things like that and be dead serious. Not, not even pandering. They'll be dead serious. So at a certain point, obesity or, uh, an unhealthy body can be in the eye of the beholder, but facts will trump what someone thinks or what they feel. Okay. Your BMI is a pretty good indicator of where you are. All right. And that's just that, but I digress. BMI, which physicians have used to measure body fatness and predict obesity related health risks for 200 years is indirect and imperfect due to its historically harmful use for racist exclusion Per a newly issued policy from the AMA's Council on Science Public Health, the report found that BMI does not appropriately represent racial and ethnic minorities because it's based on the imagined ideal Caucasian of the 19th century without considering a person's gender or ethnicity. Now, can we stop right here? As I said from the beginning, this whole thing with obesity and weighing a lot, it's a Western thing. You're going to find the heaviest people in mostly white countries, actually, in uh, Western Europe, UK, Australia, United States. So why are we talking about racial stuff when the countries with the highest uh, BMI averages are going to be in white countries? The lowest BMI is going to be in Asia, Africa, etc. If anything, it could be racist against the white man. But, you know, people have a U.S. centric view and don't see the entire world. But let's keep on going here. Uh, in the late 1800s, Matrix originator, Belgian mathematician Lambert Adolf Jacques Quetelet determined that the body weight of a normal man was proportional to his height. Quetelet's study sample was composed of only white European men. Then in 1972, American physiologist Ansel Keys used Quetelet's findings as a basis for a calculation to estimate body fat. He proposed looking at the ratio between the person's weight in pounds and their height in inches. The higher the ratio, the more the person is considered unhealthy in a U.S. BMI is determined by dividing a person's weight in pounds by the person's height in inches, multiplying that number by 703 adults with a BMI of less than 18.5 are regarded as underweight. Those totals between 18.5 and 24.9 are categorized as healthy folks boasting a BMI from 25.0 to 29.9 are labeled overweight and anyone with a 30 or above marked obese. This is kind of accurate. You know, I'm I'm considered overweight, and that's probably correct. That doesn't mean that I'm some type of, you know, fat slob either. But that doesn't mean I'm in the perfect health range. It's just the reality. When you're looking at elderly people, typically they're not going to be too much into the overweight category, and they most certainly won't be in the obese category. If anything, you're going to see them almost to the underweight category, almost. But really, in the 18.5 to 24.9, healthy weight. All right, that's just what that is. All right, for children between ages 2 and 19, the average BMI doubled during the pandemic. Men and women with high, well, that's crazy, between double, yeah, so people just at the crib eating, gaining weight, not doing anything, you know, being sedentary. Men and women with high BMIs have long been considered at grave risk for disorders such as heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and certain cancers. However, the AMA found that BMI, while useful in forecasting the well-being of a general population, is mostly inaccurate in predicting an individual's long-term wellness. In fact, the researchers found that BMI sorely falls short as a health indicator due to the scale's disregard for how fat is stored in different body types across racial and ethnic groups. That has nothing to do with anything, really. I mean, look, your body, you can have, your, your genetics will determine at a certain point your body shape, but it doesn't mean that you don't have that fat on you. It doesn't mean that you don't have stuff clogging your arteries and everything else. It doesn't mean that you are healthy because your fat is distributed differently than someone else's. If you are a woman, you're five foot five and weigh 275 pounds. It doesn't matter if the fat is distributed in the way that's pleasing to certain people 
that is pleasing to the individual that has that weight on her, regardless of what, you still have a lot of weight on you. And somebody with those type of proportions will typically not be an elderly person because at the end of the day, you're going to have health related complications as a result. It's just that simple. There's more to the article. Um, I'll, I'll link to it. Okay. They talk about South Asians and whatnot. They don't, they don't talk about Samoans. Uh, they talk about, Oh, what well, the Samoans they have a lot of body fat and whatnot. All is that in the third? Well, they also got a lot of diabetes and high blood pressure. Is that normal? Is that just okay? Does that not indicate um, a health problem? As I close, I want to say this. There's more than BMI to determine someone's health or their ability to be healthy. There's more than BMI to determine that, of course. If you smoke crack for a living, that might be, you might be skinny as a rail, but you smoke crack for a living, that's not very good. You shouldn't up fentanyl. You may have a very low BMI, but you are a crackhead. Hunter Biden, another one. He does not appear to be into the obese category, right? He might be a little bit regular weight, slightly above, but... Smokes crack, allegedly, drinks and all that kind of stuff. That might be a danger. So all those things matter. All those things are contributing factors. But I think the BMI is pretty accurate when determining body fat. Now, we want to try to take that metric and use it for everything. That's going to be a reach. But it is a reach because you have other mitigating factors that determine someone's health. And it is not racist, <laughs> That's the key that I want to really drive home. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what said you? How do you feel about the the concept, the idea, the, the BMI, body mass index scale? How do you feel about that being racist? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. BMI is not racist. Are there other things to consider when determining someone's health in a, in a holistic sense? Sure. Absolutely. But just because BMI is, I guess you would say, imperfect or not the only measure does not mean people can say that it's racist. That's pretty ridiculous. I think it's a way for a lot of Americans to cope with the fact that we have an obesity epidemic that we're having a hard time being able to solve. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.